You know, those of you who are, mashallah, now focused on healthy, healthy living. I'm sure you are focused on clean eating. You are monitoring what goes into your bodies, right? So you're careful. And when you enroll yourself into like a gym or something like that, where you're trying to pursue a healthy lifestyle, your trainer, your coach would instruct you, would tell you, it's best that you have a journal, a log, where you log what you're eating. Why? To be able to know, okay, today I've eaten this, 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 this. Just imagine if we had a log or a journal for our thoughts, for what we allow to creep into our mind, for the things that we hear around us, for the conversations that we indulge in. This is all intake. It's all coming into you. So much to the extent that we have information flooding, uh, unnecessary information, flooding our lives from all parts of the world. We are involved in scandals that don't even concern us. That we have no connection whatsoever. Someone in some part of the world is going through a difficult time in his or her life. He's going through a crisis and you and I here, we have an opinion. Why? Because someone forwarded it, forwarded it to us on one of the WhatsApp groups. So now we are aware of what's going on in that part of the world. And here we are decreeing opinions, you know, oh, maybe it was like this and like that. And that person is wrong. This person is right. Don't you all agree? Constantly notifications coming through. You've got your WhatsApp, you've got your Instagram, you've got this platform, that platform that you are in, your Viber, this, that. There's so much of information coming in. Whilst in reality, you don't need all of that. It really doesn't matter. If you sit down for a minute and think of all the information that's coming in, what really matters? Honestly, it's just like 1%. So many notifications coming through, it disturbs you. It, you know, now there are apps to stop notifications because the notifications are too much. They disturb you, they, they hamper and render you unproductive. You start to procrastinate, you're working at office and then suddenly tit -tit, email comes through, tit -tit, WhatsApp message comes through. So you, you, you go from this to that, to your Facebook social media feed, this, that, you end up not doing anything, you procrastinate. Students were studying, they keep switching from social media feeds. In the past, like in 2013 or 2014, I think the average user of Facebook would check his or her social media feed, not on the mobile phone, like maybe on the desktop perhaps, 20 to 25 times per day. Now the number has doubled and tripled. Sometimes we're just so used to it that we take our mobile phones out. You just checked your feed like two minutes ago and then here you are scrolling all over again. And now Facebook doesn't know what to do with all that information. They've actually come up with two feeds now. Now you have a feed for your family and your friends and now you have another feed, the explore feed for your pages, businesses and whatnot. There's so much of content out there. So you can just imagine we've been bombarded with all this information. So it's obviously making us anxious. We're constantly in a flurry from this to that. We really need to disconnect, to connect to Allah, and then to connect to your family, your loved ones, your relatives. You need to disconnect. Take a time out. I'm not against, I am an advocate for using technology. I am on social media. But we need to straighten our priorities. The message is firstly for myself and then all of you all. We need to have principles in place. We need to have rules in place. Like, okay, you know what? When we are at the table to eat, no mobile phones. It doesn't matter, anybody can call. It'll be after the meals. Whilst we are eating, we focus on our food. We focus on family. Family time is family time. When you are reading the Quran, no mobile phones. That's the time that you have for Allah. We need to prioritize. And that helps with the intake. You don't fill yourself with all kinds of information that's coming from everywhere. You don't do it in the real world, in the, in the, in the offline world, you don't do it in the, in the online world. Because remember, don't just think that, you know, ghibah, backbiting is something that's only applicable in the real world, in the offline world, and I can do whatever it is in the online world. I can comment sarcastic com comments, I can say all kinds of hurtful things behind the screen, and it's not going to be considered as ghibah, it is going to be considered as ghibah. And subhanallah, we have taken ghibah very lightly. During the time of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he said that, you know, along the lines of these words, that ghiba is akin to consuming the flesh of your dead brother or your dead sister. Subhanallah. Cannibalism. And scholars like Imam Al-Nawawi, Rahimahullah, and others have gone on to explain that ghiba backbiting is not just only to speak negatively about someone. Even if you subtly indicate negatively about someone that is ghibah, that is backbiting. And he goes on to say, even if you were to subtly indicate in regard to that person's appearance, 
If you were to negatively indicate in regard to that person's appearance, in regard to that person's religiosity, in regard to that person's wealth, in regard to that person's business, in regard to that person's assets, in regard to that person's family, in regard to that person's spouse, in regard to that person's children, in regard to that person's friends, anything, it is considered riba. It is considered backbiting. And you are consuming the flesh of that individual. It is considered riba when you speak the truth. If you are lying, if you're saying something negative about your brother or sister that does not exist, you don't have any proof whatsoever, then it is considered namima, slander, which is worse than riba. And do you know how to make tawbah for this? You know, honestly, why I'm mentioning this is because it's not worth it. Here we are striving so hard to do so many good deeds. You are earning hard earned money. And you're going on Hajj, you're going on Umrah, you're giving your Sadaqah, you're giving out your Zakah, you're coming to the Masjid for Salatul Fajr when the weather is cold, you're coming for Salatul Jumu'ah. Why are you doing all of this? You're doing it for what? To please Allah and to earn good deeds? Yes or no? So don't you think that you have to safeguard those good deeds? What's the point of doing good deeds on one end and then losing all of it by backbiting about someone? It's like filling water in a bucket full of holes. It doesn't make sense. On the day of Qiyamah, you are going to be thinking that you're going to be having mountains of good deeds. And that's the day when Allah will be dishing out justice. Every single person you spoke bad about will come to you and take from your good deeds. And when you run out of good deeds, you will have to take on the burden of their sins. Subhanallah. Think about it. Some scholars even go on to say that backbiting is even worse than zina. Why? Because zina, it's between you and Allah. If Allah forgives you, your record is clear. But backbiting, you have trespassed firstly the limits of Allah, Hukukullah, and then secondly, Hukukul Ibad as well. So if you want to make tawbah in regard to backbiting, you need to first seek the forgiveness of Allah. You need to lament, you need to cry, you need to weep, and you need to turn back to Allah. Oh Allah, forgive me for what I have spoken about this individual. And it doesn't end there. You have to now go to that individual. Think about it. You need to swallow your pride and go to that individual and tell him or her. I'm sorry. Uh, you know, this generic WhatsApp messages won't do. I'm going on Umrah, you know, forgive me if I've done anything wrong. You know, clear my records. This won't work. You need to specifically go to that person and tell him, look, I'm sorry. I had this wrong impression of you and I've spoken bad about you. Please forgive me for the sake of Allah. And it doesn't end there. The third thing, now you need to put the records straight, depending on how you backbit that individual. Let's say you were in a WhatsApp group with, I don't know, 50 members and you started backbiting and you're the admin of the group, mashaAllah. And you used that group to backbite about this. You know, some people even make groups with headings to backbite about others, subhanAllah. This group is to be to, to, to backbite about so and so. If you influenced all those 50 people, like say, if I were to use this platform, al Billah, to come here, and how many of you here? 500,000 of you here. And if I speak bad about someone, Mr. X, I speak bad about him. And I have told you all, so and so is bad, so and so is this. Now my tawbah, I have to again come to all of you and tell you, you know what? I had this wrong impression of Mr. X. It was all wrong. He's actually a good person. He's like this, he's like this. And I have to mention his good qualities and his good traits. Do you have the time for all of this, my dear brothers and sisters? Do you have the time? Don't you think that we have better things to be doing? We live in a time and an era where time is running so fast. And in the midst of this, do you want to accumulate such sins? And this is why I said we need to disconnect at times because if not, you're even backbiting about people who live in another part of the world. Say someone, some international public figure is going through some problem in his or, he, in his or her life. Some political leader is going through some problem. Some celebrity is going through something. And here we are like a cricketer, a sportsman or someone. And here we are discussing about their lives, about their marriages, about their children. Is it benefiting you in any way? Are you getting any good deeds out of it? Don't you think it'll be better for you to focus on something related to your dunya, perhaps your business, earning some money, spending time with your family, your children, or doing something for your akhirah, reading the Quran, doing some dhikr, thinking about Allah, furthering your knowledge, seeking knowledge, reading a hadith. Don't you think that's better, more productive than gathering, sitting, drinking coffee and talking bad about others? May Allah save us all.